Okay, we uh, tested this unit last night for a couple hours. We were running it continuously at 50 amps. Uh, the MOSFETs were running about 100, yeah, about 100 degrees Fahrenheit at the uh, heat sink right below it. Uh, we were cycling to 100 amps as much as our power supply would let us for, you know, 30 seconds to 60, 60 seconds and drop it back on down to 50 amps and it was doing fine at 100 amps. We turned it up to 200 amps and it lasted for about 30 seconds and it blew these uh, MOSFETs out. You can see the body of them right below the screw there it's exploded. They blew them out. So we're going to have to change all these MOSFETs out. These MOSFETs were rated at 31 amps. Uh, it's the best we could find for the reasonable cost. So we have some new uh, IRF ones 110 amps each is going to be uh, almost 900 amps continuous capability with the new ones. These are TO247 uh, large die MOSFETs. Handle a lot of heat. They're running 180. To, uh, the new ones should run about 315 watts each, so should handle quite a bit of heat. Uh, the positive bus was running about 170 degrees at 50 amps. And that's without a fan, by the way. If we put the fan on it, we could keep it cool about 100 degrees, 110 degrees at the positive bus. And that's the hardest part in the uh, in this unit is that positive bus uh, because of the diodes. It's the uh, blocking diodes that are doing the uh, the job of stopping the uh, the power coming back in the unit and burning it out, uh, which you're going to have to put on the in circuit in line anyhow when you uh, run these. Uh, Uh, PWMs that are, are resonant and run chokes and stuff like that. So this is uh, blocking diodes are built right in. These diodes are uh, going to be 60 amps each. Actually, they're running uh, 110. These smaller ones. The new one's going to run a little bit more than that. Uh, so it should be capable of about way over 300 amps. Uh, the blocking diodes on the positive bus. So that's where the heat's being generated. So what we did. We took and we put a new uh, angle on here, and we put some uh, heat sink grease in here. So we're actually getting a thermal connection, and then we're uh, putting a mica chip uh, underneath here. So we're basically insulating, electrically insulating that angle, but we're sending the energy from this positive bus down to the angle into the heat sink itself. So. The energy is going in this heat sink. Of course, it's going to heat up all these MOSFETs also. It actually heats the MOSFETs up because it's the hottest part in the bus. So we're going to try some other diodes, see if we can run a little bit cooler. Uh, worst case is we're going to be putting the fan on here and have it on a switch. So when it gets too hot, the fans will shut off. Uh, we designed this thing to be actually underneath the car or in the front of the radiator so it can cool down from the ambient airflow and you won't need the fan. But if the airflow is not enough, uh, it will automatically turn on. We're also going to run a, uh, a temperature uh, sensor in here. So you have a sensor. You know what the temperature of this unit is running at all times inside the car or truck. Uh, so you have you know, keep an eye on this thing so it doesn't overheat. So uh, that's for all, all for now, and we'll uh, keep you guys posted. All right. Thanks for watching.